Alrighty friends, now that we've got the ET4 assembled, it is time to run through the first steps. So my friends, alrighty friend, <clears throat> alrighty friends, now that we've got the ET4 assembled, it is time to get ready for that first print. So my friends, let's get cracking. Alright, before we get started, let's make sure we understand they've got a bed leveling system that only works when the hot end is cool. So we're going to run through that almost first, but I want to make sure you don't add filament because then you would actually have your hot end warm and that could be a problem with this. So I'm going to just set this little guy to the side. I'm not going to plug it into the computer, I'm just going to turn it on. And then we'll jump into the menu and test the movement before we go on to the auto bed leveling system. So when the menu launches, you've only got three buttons, print, prepare, and settings. We're going to move to settings first. All right, so on the manual screen, let's quickly test these. Right now, I'm going to be on X. I'm going to leave it at 10 millimeters, and if we tap the plus, you can see that it moves X the right way. I'm going to try minus. So far, so good. Let's switch to Y. Moves it forward. Moves it back. Let's test Z, up, and let's do minus. And then we're not going to test extruder because we're not doing extrusion. While we're on this screen, let's look at the menu. You can see that I've got version 1.13 of the firmware, and this is where I would hit upgrade if I were upgrading to a new firmware, which I'm going to save for a later project. Real quickly, let's look at the prepare. There is a preheat, a change filament, and a level. We'll do that in a second. And then, of course, let's back up and just take a look at print. The only option here is to go up and down on the menu and choose print. So there's not much you can change on this printer. But now that we know ours works, let's actually do the leveling before we heat it up and add filament. All right, I'm going to emphasize again, make sure you have not heated up your hot end. Remove this little adapter. I've got a tray on the front of this cart where I'm going to store it, so I'm going to put it back. It is 3, 3D printed, so you could make another one. And then this is going to attach to your hot end. <laughs> Making sure, again, you don't have your hot end hot. And then simply slide it over just like that so that this little part's going to be able to touch the bed. All right, friends, here we go. We're going to hit prepare. We're going to switch to level. And then we are going to hit the auto button. It says keep it under 50, so it is reminding us to not mess that up. I'm going to hit yes because I have not heated mine up. And then this is perhaps the strangest thing. It homes up. I have the camera set to low because we're going to do the bed. But it actually homes all the way up. And then once it does that, it'll go over to the X. And it'll come back down. And it will actually do the bed leveling. Now if you're noticing that this takes a lot of time, you're not wrong. Uh, every single time it starts a print, that homing up uh, takes, you know, 10-15 seconds that you don't normally get. Because usually a printer is closer to its bed. But here it comes returning back into the field of view. And then I'm going to bump this up to 10x speed. So what this does is it taps all the way across the bed and it tells you how close your bed is to level. I'm about a millimeter from perfect and I'm just going to fix that when I first start printing. The process took four minutes to complete. The process does not adjust my bed. I still have to do that manually, but it lets me know where my bed is before I start printing. All right, friends. So right there, it tells me that it is complete. So I can hit OK. And then once again, all this is doing is telling me that I've got to lower my bed in all these spots to get it closer to perfect. It doesn't adjust it for us. We've got to do those with the knobs on the printer bed. All right, at this time, make sure you remove that sensor. Find that cap, put it back on, and then find a place to store your sensor so you don't lose it. It's time to add filament, friends. All right, so let's switch to change filament. I want to switch to one centimeter at a time as it pulls through. And then we need to turn on the temperature. Notice it goes up past 210, which is great. And then once it heats up, so I'm going to watch that. Then I'm going to do the load button. Alrighty, friends, so that's heated up. And now I'm going to take the filament that comes with it. 
And the first thing is to snip the edge so that you've got a nice clean edge to slide through. And then I'm going to slide it through here into the printer. And then if you just give it a slight nudge, it'll go in and it'll start going. And I like to push it all the way through just by hand. And now I've got a little bit of filament that came out when I did that. And if I go over here and type load, it'll do one centimeter at a time. Now, if you accidentally still had it left on 30, uh, it'll pull a ton. Uh, so you can see this nudging just a little bit. I'm going to change the camera so that you can see it coming out of the hot end as well. So we, so I nudged that down, and now if I hit load, you can see I'm pushing that filament out so that we're ready for our first print. Alrighty, friends, so this is Kira, and this is what I slice with so we can send it to the printers. I have got my printer connected via USB, and now it's time to add a new printer. So if we click Settings, Printer, and Add Printer, then you can go through the list to add a non-network printer. If you hit Custom, we want an ANET, and then this one is the ET4. Simply hit Add. If you want to look at the settings, they mention that it's 220 by 220 by 250. It's got the heated bed. These are all great. And then if you check the extruder, it used to be a problem that it wouldn't have the correct filament, but this does. So we can just hit next. You need to grab your file that you're going to slice. I'm going to grab a special one that I use called One Cube. It's in my 3D modeling folder. If I search by typing One C, it shows up. And here is my One Cube or my One Cube MDH. I've made more than one, but they are the same file. It is a tiny centimeter, and what's really cool about it is it's only going to take about five minutes. So to print it, I need to change my settings. I prefer my first print to be with the extra fast 0.3 millimeters. If you can't see all these things, it's just a matter of opening the little tabs. Uh, because our nozzle is 0.4 millimeters, that's why we have two walls and it equals 0.8. There's math in all of these things. Uh, you can pick your infill. I'm going to go 10%. And I'm going to use the typical grid or lines. Today's going to be a lines day. I like to print with 200. I'm going to leave the build point at 60. It comes with a print speed of 50, so I'm going to say fine. I'll accept that. You know what, I'll even stay at 210. They suggest 210, I will try 210, even though normally I use 200. I don't like brim, I like skirt, because that way I can see what it's going to look like. If you cannot see these settings, there is a hidden gear that you can click, and you can make them visible. For my skirt, I like to show the line count and the distance. And that's how I was able to say four lines 10 millimeters away. At this point, I could save it to a file and take it on an SD card, but I've got mine connected via USB, so I can hit print and click print, and we will have a print coming out in no time. This is the monitor screen, so it's showing you that it is heating up. If you want to look at the preview screen, you can slide through this slider and see how it's going to print as it happens. So you can see right there's no layers, and then it just raises up. You can zoom in if you hold shift. You can right click and drag so you can get a good look and see what that 10% infill is gonna look like as it builds. <laughs> Now this is the strangest thing. Uh, this is the only printer I've ever worked with that homes up. And I have built printers where I did it backwards. So the first time I saw that it confused the heck out of me. We'll turn on the upgraded speed so that you don't have to watch all this printing. Uh, I did not have my bed lowered uh, when it first started, so my skirt did not show up. But because I had those four lines, I knew what was going on, and I was able to rotate that bed quick so that the print finished the way that it was supposed to. 
I don't know if I'm going to stay with this 210 degree temperature. I'm going to go back and probably try 200 or 205. Uh, but as you can see, the Kira settings did give us a centimeter cube. Alrighty, friends. Alrighty, friends. So there is the first print with the ANET ET4. I might stay with 210. I might go back to 200. I'll keep playing with that. I am also going to lower my bed. Those numbers they showed me where I was negative uh, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. I'm going to lower the bed that much so that I get a better skirt. My current skirt was not printing because the bed was so tight. So I'm going to adjust that. Those are the things I'll keep you posted on as we keep playing. But hey, we've got a first print in a matter of minutes. Friends, if you found the video useful, please give it a like. If you've got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.